In addition to the lights coming on, I have another uh, special providential happening, and that is there is a visiting priest here from, uh, from the University of, of Dallas, Father Stephen Gregg. We're going to go ahead and start with morning prayer, but we will have a Mass here today. So that's why I am now in my full Dalmatic. Uh, our morning prayer will begin on page... Uh, 74, and we will do the full uh, morning prayer.
God, come to my assistance. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Turn to me and have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am alone and poor. See my loneliness and suffering and take away all my sins, my God. O Lord, in your light we see light itself. Sin speaks to the sinner in the depths of his heart. There is no fear of God before his eyes. He plots the defeat of goodness as he lies on his bed. He has set his foot on evil ways. He clings to what is evil. <laughs> For both man and beast you give protection, O oh, oh Lord, how precious is your love. My God, the sons of men, find refuge in the shelter of your wings. Keep on loving those who know you, doing justice for upright hearts. Let the foot of the proud not crush me, nor the hand of the wicked cast me out. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you are the source of unfailing light. Give us true knowledge of your mercy so that we may renounce our pride and be filled with the riches of your house. O oh Lord, in your light we see light itself. O oh God, you are great and glorious. We marvel at your power. Strike up the instruments, a song to my God with timbrels, chant to the Lord with cymbals, Sing to him a new song, exalt and acclaim his name. Let your every creature serve you, for you spoke and they were made. You sent forth your spirit and they were created. No one can resist your word. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh God, you are great and glorious. We marvel at your power. Exult in God's presence with hymns of praise. All peoples clap your hands. Cry to God with shouts of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, we must fear, great King over all the earth. God goes up with shouts of joy. The Lord goes up with trumpet blast. Sing praise for God, sing praise. Sing praise to our King, sing praise. The princes of the peoples are assembled with the people of Abraham's God. The rulers of the earth belong to God, to God who reigns over all. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. 
God, King of all peoples and all ages. It is your victory we celebrate as we sing with all the skill at our command. Help us always to overcome evil by good that we may rejoice in your triumph forever. Exult in God's presence with hymns of praise. Remain seated. Do to no one what, your, your, what you yourself dislike. Give to the hungry some of your bread and to the naked some of your clothing. Seek counsel from every wise man. At all times bless the Lord God and ask him to make all your paths straight and to grant success to all your endeavors and plans. Incline my heart according to your will, O God. Speed my steps along your path. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Incline your heart according to your will, O God. Show us your mercy, Lord. Remember your holy covenant. Please, please stand. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to share his nickel of salvation and the forgiveness of our sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Show us your mercy, Lord. Remember your holy covenant. Let us give thanks to Christ and offer him continued praise, for he sanctifies us and calls us his brothers. Lord, help your brothers to grow With single-minded devotion, we dedicate the beginnings of this day to the honor of your resurrection. As a sign of your love, you renew each day for the sake of our well-being and happiness. Teach us today to recognize your presence in all men. Grant that we may live today in peace with all men. And let us pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from God our Savior, hear our morning prayer, Help us to follow the light and live the truth. In you we have been born again as the sons and daughters of light. May we be your witnesses before all the world. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May, all, may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Thank you for welcoming me to come celebrate Mass with you and for you. The ancient Christians marveled, among other things, that wherever they showed up in the empire, they could find people who believed in Christ. Uh, it's been a long time since I was in Kansas City. Uh, my grandparents grew up in Independence, Missouri, so the last time I was here was when my grandfather, grandfather passed away 20 years ago. But as a professor at the University of Dallas, I have a student of mine who lives in Kansas City, Kansas. I'm on my way to Dubuque, Iowa to give a set of talks to Trappist nuns who are there. I'm a Cistercian monk down in Dallas. So I thought, well, it's easier to drive to Kansas City from Dallas than to Dubuque. So I've been stopping over for just this day. So it's a special pleasure for me uh, to get also to share the Word of God and the Eucharist with you, not just the, the, the zip code for this morning. <laughs> and so, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to, to Almighty, Almighty God, God and, and to you, you my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, whose providence never fails in its design, keep from us, we humbly beseech you, all that might harm us, and grant all that works for our good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the book of Tobit. Grief-stricken in spirit, I, Tobit, groaned and wept aloud. Then with sobs I began to pray. You are righteous, O Lord, and all your deeds are just. All your ways are mercy and truth. You are the judge of the world. And now, O Lord, may you be mindful of me and look with favor upon me. Punish me not for my sins nor for my inadvertent offenses nor for those of my ancestors. We have sinned against you and disobeyed your commandments, so you handed us over to plundering, exile, and death, till you made us the talk and reproach of all the nations among, you, among whom you had dispersed us. Yes, your judgments are true and many in dealing with me as my sins and those of my ancestors deserve. For we have not kept your commandments, nor have we trodden down the path of truth before you. So now deal with me as you please, and command my life breath to be taken from me, that I may go from the face of the earth into the dust. It is better for me to die than to live, because I have heard insulting calumnies, and I am overwhelmed with grief. Lord, command me to be delivered from such anguish. Let me go to the everlasting abode. Lord, refuse me not, for it is better for me to die than to endure such misery in life and to hear these insults. On the, say at, and on the same day at Abektana in Midia, it so happened that Raguel's daughter Sarah also had listened to abuse from one of her father's maids. For she had been married set to seven husbands, but the wicked, demons, wicked demon Asmodeus killed them off before they could have intercourse with her. 
as is prescribed for wives. So the maid said to her, you are the one who strangles your husbands. Look at you. You are already married, been married seven times, and you have not had the joy of any one of your husbands. Why do you beat us? Is it on the account of your seven husbands because they are dead? <clears throat> May we never see a son or daughter of yours. The girl was deeply saddened that day and went up to the upper chamber of her house where she planned to hang herself. But she reconsidered saying to herself, no, people would level an insult against my father. You had only one beloved daughter and she hanged herself because of ill fortune. And thus would I have caused my father in his old age to go down to the netherworld laden with sorrow. It is far better for me not to hang myself, but to beg the Lord to have me die so that I, I need no longer to hear such insults. At that time then she spread out her hands and facing the window poured out her prayer. Blessed are you, O Lord, merciful God, and blessed is your holy and honorable name. Blessed are you in all your works forever. At that very time, the prayer of the two suppliants was heard in the glorious presence of Almighty God. So Raphael was sent to heal them both, to remove the cataracts from Tobit's eyes, and that he might see God's sunlight again, and to marry Raguel's daughter, Sarah, to Tobit's wife, Tob Tobit's son, Tobiah, and then drive the wicked demon, Asmodeus, from her. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. The responsorial psalm, to you, O Lord, I lift my soul. To, to you, O Lord, I lift my soul. In you, I, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exalt over me. No one who waits for you shall be put to shame. Those who put their put to shame, who needlessly break faith. To you, you O Lord, Lord, I lift my soul. soul. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior. To, to you, O Lord, Lord I, I lift my, my soul. soul. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your kindness are from of old. In your kindness, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice. He teaches the humble his way. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Alleluia, alleluia. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Lord, to you, Lord. Some Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to Jesus and put this question to, to him, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, if someone's brother dies, leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first married a woman and died, leaving no descendants. So the second brother married her and died, leaving no descendants. And the third likewise, and the seven left no descendants. Last of all, the woman also died. At the resurrection, when they arise, whose wife will she be? Jesus said to them, you are not mis misled because are you not misled because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God? When they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but they are like the angels in heaven. For they, for, as for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the passage about the book, bush, 
how God told them, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not God of the dead, but of the living. You are greatly misled. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Just a few thoughts. Usually they design readings with a pattern that allows the preacher to easily discern what the message is supposed to be. But here the pattern is in, in both readings, we have at least seven young husbands dying. <laughs> uh, in, in the book of Tobit, this poor young woman is cursed. Every evening of her wedding, a demon comes with a giant sword and kills her new husband. And, and then of course in the odd question, that the Sadducees make to Christ, imagining a situation in which a woman is married seven times and never has any children whose husband, who, who will be her husband in heaven. What to say about that is not easy to tell. <laughs> or the other pattern in Tobit that we have, uh, that the book itself notices, in two different parts of the world, two people are being insulted for bad things that are happening to them, and they both pray for death. <laughs> it's, a, it's rough in the middle of the week. But if you haven't uh, read the whole book of Tobit, it's, it's not very long. We, we read it, almost all of it this week. They just sort of pick a week in the summer when people might be at mass. And uh, they chop into the little pieces, but it's not very long. And it's a, a captivating story. So if, you, if you're looking for a way to revive your interest in the Old Testament, there's no better place to start, perhaps, than the book of Tobit, where we see these people who are profoundly faithful in spite of sort of like a miniature version of the book of Job, which is very long. Um, they're, they're challenged by all kinds of problems that are not properly speaking their fault. In fact, they're basically very fine, upstanding people who are suffering a great deal. Tobit is uh, blinded. Uh, it's cataracts, but it's sort of, sort of a curse on him, even though he buries the dead that no one else will bury. He's faithful to that ministry. And the poor girl has done nothing wrong. This demon is just attacking her. Um, and even so, they, they know that that's true. Then they, they, they pray, Lord, may I just die if this is the way life is going to be. And yet, what they're really doing is inviting God's power. So an example of faith. The great Cistercian writer, uh, St. Bernard of Clairvaux from the 12th century, says that misery is the seat of mercy. In Latin, these two words are more closely related, related than they sound in English. So miseria, misery, and misericordia, mercy. So if we want to experience God's mercy, how are we going to appreciate it and know it for what it is if we're not low somehow? Right? If, if we think we deserve it, then it won't feel like mercy anymore. It'll just be our reward or something, right? Uh, it's not a gift if we, if, it's sort of like if you imagine if a friend of yours gives you $20 to buy him a present. Is he going to think it's a present? Well, he gave you the money to buy it, you know? Or when I was a kid, my mother would always tell us what to get her for Christmas. And so it's sort of the surprise was gone. And it didn't feel like, so I would always have to get something else to surprise her to make it feel like a gift, you know? Uh, still her money either way. I was a little kid. Uh, but she was generous in that regard. So our, our miseries, and our, we have many miseries. It may not be that we're cursed by demons killing our husbands continually. Uh, it may not be that, uh, it may be that we have cataracts. That's one that we might all end up facing in some way, blindness, or that other people are not appreciating us for the good we are striving to do, but in fact are blaming us for, for trying to be good people. This is a rather common occurrence in, in, in the world not just today. But all the illnesses and ailments and, and difficulties and misunderstandings we suffer are given to us by God, which is a strange thing to say, because he knows that there are opportunities for us to grow in faith and to experience his mercy. And that's what Christ, I think, is saying to the Sadducees, right? That they've gotten it totally wrong, right? The question is not <laughs> who will be her husband. It's what is the power of God? 
right? You do not, have you not understood the scriptures and the power of God? And I'm not a rabbi, but I feel like those are two things you need to get right, you know? If you're going to understand the religion, the scriptures and the power of God, and you're puzzling over some strange issue, you know? God is the God of the living. So that Tobit and, and the, the daughter of Raguel, right, they, uh, they understand, like, yeah, life is, like, <laughs> is terrible, but God is powerful, and God hears their prayer, even though they're in two different parts of, of the world. So we have to always remember that, that the God that we are here to worship is the God of the living. Death is the fruit of sin, and it's not just our individual sin, it's a whole long, terrible story of the human race. So it's not something we're going to solve with a simple question. It's going to be an, an experience of new life that Christ is offering us. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, inspired by your Son's words and his hope of revealing to us the power of God, we offer to you our prayers. For ourselves, that we may acknowledge our weaknesses, our sinfulness, and our need for mercy, and pray to God and surrender to him, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are in the healing professions, that they may seek the intercession of St. Raphael and Heal those who come to them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For travelers, that they may arrive to their destination safely and return home safely, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs of our parish community, for all who are ill, for all those who are depressed, for those who are lonely, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let's make our special intention for this Mass, those priests, our parish priests and the priests of this archdiocese who are gathered for retreat, that they may return to their flocks refreshed, invigorated, and courageous, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our own intentions, we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, grant us the gift of your spirit to pray more fervently for all those things that we need and to see more clearly the needs of others. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have received the bread we offer you, work of the earth and fruit of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness, we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Let us be God.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Trusting in your compassion, O Lord, we come eagerly with our offerings to your sacred altar, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim Claim your, your death, death, O Lord, Lord and, and profess your resurrection, resurrection until you come, come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and to bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, 
O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. To you I call, for you will surely heed me, O God. Turn your ear to me, hear my words.
Let us pray. Governed by your spirit, we pray, O Lord, those you feed with the body and blood of your Son, that professing you, not just in word or in speech, but also in works and in truth, we may merit to enter the kingdom of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise.